Hey guys, welcome back. Day 16. We're going to get some more good stuff installed. I got my bag of shop towels from Sam's Club. 30 cents a piece for the Terry towels. I've got multiple choices for what you can get. Um, this is pretty much what it is right here. This is from another pack. They're nice. They're thick and cotton. They're absorbent. You can use them for a lot of different things. I wouldn't do, you know, real good polishing with them or anything like that, but they're good for cleaning. They're good for gripping stuff and they take a beating. You can wash them, but like I said, when they get super dirty and greasy, I toss them rather than risking the rest of the laundry. Pack of 60 for the Terry towels. They have the thinner shop towels. They're a lot thinner. I mean, they're more like just industrial cloth and they're a cotton polyester blend. Those are only 17 cents a piece. You get a hundred count of those. Or they have a big brick of microfiber. You only get 30 of those, and they're like 23 bucks for the pack. So more like 50 cents a piece for the microfiber. Microfibers I do not toss out, but then again, I don't use microfiber for you know wiping up really big greasy stuff. Those are for polishing, buffing, you know, really sensitive paint stuff. So if you're a Sam's Club or a Costco member, pick your stuff up there and you can save a whole lot of cash. Well, stupid me must have given away the bolts for the crash bars when I took them off. The lower one mounted down here and then the upper one up here and they you know, came over like that. I must have left them with the crash bars when I sold them to the scrapyard because I can't, couldn't find the bolts anywhere. So I went to Home Depot and spent a couple bucks, got new bolts, you know, oh well, no big deal there. While I was there, I should have got a couple more to to fill in these flats, and I'll I'll paint them black. Just wanted to run them in for now and get the floorboards steady, but I'll take the touch up paint and paint them black so you don't see them. We can go ahead and pop in our new air filter. Just a couple Allen bolts to remove here. I went with the stock paper. Because you know what? We don't have any kind of extreme conditions around here. It wasn't cheap though. It was about 45 bucks, which is ridiculous. KN started at like 52, something like that. And I'm not a huge fan of the KNNs. You know, they're more maintenance. You have to keep them oiled, you have to clean them. They don't filter quite as well. You know, there's a there's a give and take. The better it filters, the worse performance. And the better performance, the worse filtering. I'd rather have, you know, this, it's a, it's a stock 803, you know? Plus, if I put a really free breathing intake on here, I'm going to be needing a computer modif modification. And there's no point. It's an 803 <laughs> or 805 or whatever it is. It's small. You know, it's, it's never going to be that awesome. Okay, now you guys get to see what I saw when I inspected it. And this is immediately what told me that this bike had zero effing maintenance. Look at this. I mean, that's 42,000 miles original. I'll bet my left nut. Hair, dirt, leaves, bugs, you name it, it's in there. Luckily, it did its job. And the inside, still clean. But man, is it restricted. I mean, it's like probably 25% blocked just with crap from the air. But there's no blowback, no oil, no nothing. It's just needing a replacement. And when you get the replacements, it's this whole piece. It's not like just a little paper element. You know, that would be nice. But no, you have to buy this whole darn piece. So that's why it's so much more expensive. Let's go get the clean one and look at the difference. old new <laughs> see a little difference there <laughs> yeah that's just downright nasty there you go it's in the same light <laughs> yuck into the garbage with that crap it's it's a really simple design you know it it's very watertight i'll give it that 
sure there's no crud in here. This is where the air comes in from the back. That's why it's nice and watertight. And then it comes in all the way around the filter and then through the center right up top. That's all there is to it. It's real simple. It's nice and clean in there. Not even any residue. Okay. Well, that was probably the easiest maintenance to do on an air filter I've ever seen. <laughs> you know, with the FJR, you've got to uh, at least take a little bit of plastic off. Still not a big deal, though. Bada bing, bada boom. Check that off the list. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the rear brake, get that off the list. Okay, back to the brake here. i got two things to reconnect. I've got to get the brake bracket down here. i got to rotate this whole thing again, forgot about that. Got it in neutral so it should rotate. Oh, like I said, it should rotate again. <laughs> Rotate. Come on. There we go. I'm just aligning this bottom bracket. Another couple millimeters. There we go. That looks pretty darn close. Now, I have a couple washers. We got this pin assembly, and I'm gonna bet it comes in from the back because it's got this big shoulder. And that's probably going through this boss. Yeah, that's that. All right, now the question is, where do these washers go? Time to consult the manual. One's rubber, one's metal. I'm betting the metal goes on the nut. Not sure off the top of my head where the rubber one goes. I would imagine in between them, but you know what they say about assumption. So I will read the instructions. Stand by. Well, I'm glad I looked. Another case for the climber's manual is useless. Can't even find a diagram for it. Had to look it up online to find the uh, schematics. Had it backwards. This goes in from the outside. Rubber goes between this and the support bracket. The washer, the hard washer, and the nut go on the inside. So we've got these two. You know, it's funny, I was commenting to somebody earlier today, they were saying, should I get the aftermarket manual or the OEM? And I always recommend the OEM. If you have the choice. Now, if I was, you know, going in this completely blind and needed all the info, I would have bought the OEM. But the piece of crap climbers I have is good enough for most of what I need to do here, obviously. Come on, I need you to move just a little bit. Ugh. But I found some call outs in looking up stuff where they've got the wrong info. Like they have a, a list of parts and the diagram of parts and they switched a bearing and a washer like they call one the other and you know who which do you know is right you know unless you've done it before you don't know which position it should be in and you know that the list call out is wrong but you know if when you find one thing wrong you can bet there's another <laughs> so it makes you wonder you know what i mean come on man just a little bit work with me here Trying to help you. Man, oh man, I got nothing to grab. All right, let me grab a mallet real quick. I remember where I put it. There it is. So mental note, next time you put one of these on, run this bolt through the brake bracket before you do so. That should be all I needed. 
There we go. So now I can put the hard washer and the nut on the inside. And then tighten these guys up. I will need, looks like a socket and a wrench. Look like 12 mil. Let me find my tools. Could it be 14? Nut definitely is. Let's see about the bolt. Yep, 14. <laughs> there we go. Man, it sure is odd that that rubber washer would be right against the nut. Let me double check the schematic. Well, definitely shows on the outside of it there. It's number 19. Cushion, yeah. All right. Just seems odd to me because you're torquing it down and it seems like it would want to twist. But that's what Suzuki calls for. That's what Suzuki gets. Who am I to question? There we go. Okay. So that's on. Now we can attach our brake linkage. Got our little guy down here. He slides in. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I did it again. Stupid brake linkage has to go in between. Oh. Freaking brake linkages? I really like hydraulic brakes. <laughs> oh. Okay. This has got to come off again. <laughs> Got to be kidding me. Stupid mistakes. Why is that jumping? There we go. This wasn't quite on there. It's like an acorn nut. Must have had it just cockeyed. Of course, it's just snug enough, too, where you can't do it by hand until the very end. Okay. So, nuts off. I got the washer coming off the back. Brake linkage up. <laughs> okay, let's do this first. We know it's attached. We've got the washer. We got the spring. And it goes through the hole. Barely? Come on now. Do not tell me this has to be linked before the wheel goes on. There is no way. You son of a... No, can't be. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, that was... That was not going to be fun. So we've got fresh shoes on here. So it's going to need different adjustment from the way it came off. Obviously, it's... If you watch the takeoff, it's way closer to the end here. I'm going to have to back this quite a ways off. So we need to find where the, the neutral point is, or it needs to be room for the brakes to move is the point. We have our indicator here. I'm not even sure if it's accurate. It's showing the brake limiting, brake lining wear limit. Doesn't move much. That works, so that's it. 
Let me push the pedal to my hand. We'll see how much travel we have. You want a little bit of travel on the pedal before it actually does anything. So I'm pushing it with my hand. You can see it moving. That's pretty darn dead on. I have drag about 20% into the pedal movement. Right here it's starting to drag. And then all the way down to the floor obviously is locked. That's right where I want it. That'll work. And of course I can tweak it if I need to later on. Just make sure that's seated in there. And it is. Okay, that's good to go. I will give that... I guess I don't need to give that a squirt. That's just going to stay there. Didn't take that apart. That's still lubed. Everything's clean inside. Okay, now I can put back <laughs> the linkage. Wow. Life's an adventure. <laughs> oh, that's why it was snug. It's a half lock nut. That's why it didn't spin very freely. I guess that makes sense. They don't want this one accidentally coming off ever. <laughs> Since it would lock up your brakes. That'd be a bad thing. Okay. Reassemble. Third time's a charm, right? And this will finish up the new rear end. Ah... Uh, I really want to wash this blue off so I can see the white walls, but I know better. They specifically warned me, grease on white walls is a nightmare to get off. So wash it last. <laughs> they said just use a little Gojo on it and it'll take it right off. It's just like a plastic film, almost like a saran wrap. Probably don't even need to use the Gojo. Probably just a little bit of water. It's not sticking very well, but man, I know this is just gonna look awesome sauce. Okay, let's see, what's next? Let's, uh, oh, we can put on this side uh, seat bracket. Did I say seat bracket? I meant fender bracket. This guy's simple enough. Oh, and I just realized I have to take that whole dang battery tray assembly back out. Oh, crap. Do I have to cut those zip ties on that ECU now? Because uh, I'm doing things out of order because the stupid fenders are going to be another week and a half because the painter's behind. So I'm trying to figure out what I can do you know, in the meantime, but I have to do some things in order. And the fender bracket has to be installed underneath the battery box. So, this is a pain in the butt. I don't have that long fingers. So that means... I gotta redo it. And why is this? It's not quite the right diameter. Or the right length. One of the two. Anyway, there's there's a bit of a gap. I guess it's alright, as long as it's even. Not super important, I suppose. Would be nice if it was actually exact to that spacer diameter. Let me just start these by hand. Because of that gap, they uh, kind of want to go in cockeyed a little bit. When you have a gap like this, it's important that you don't run one down more than the other. You want that gap on both sides. So I'm just going to keep this hand tight and loose. Obviously, it's got to move around there. It's got to move around a bit when I put the fender support on. All right, now I need to actually watch the physical DVD. There's a couple videos that they don't have on YouTube that are only on the DVD they send you. And it's not even like a data DVD with movies. It's like the old fashioned, you need a DVD player or a DVD player app to watch it. And the seat bracket and all that is one of those. But I need to watch the fender bracket install to figure out if I do have to take that all off. I think I do. Stand by. 
And, yep, of course it all has to come off again. Why wouldn't it? <laughs> well, that's what happens when you do a custom project. It's not like everything's laid out. That's all right. We'll have this off in a few minutes. You can disconnect all the wires again. Pull the box out again. Stand by. Okay, just so I don't have to redo the ECU box again, I've got this, I think, out enough where I can put in the new brackets and stuff. There's going to be some stuff sliding down in here, and I think that'll be just fine. i got to read their instructions on how to get the fender bracket in right now. Oh, and heh, while I'm in here, I did go ahead and bump my preload up two. I went from four to six. There's still a little bit more I can go, but I think that'll be a better baseline for me given my weight. I'm not taking off all that much weight off the back to make such a huge difference. So just giving a little head start there, I'm pretty sure I'm going to like this better than the middle setting. So what I'm installing here is basically another pain in the ass. <laughs> this is going to be the fender support bracket and it's going to basically sandwich this support pillar right under here. This little notch is where the rear fender will slide in and then tighten down with a single bolt. But what we've got to do is get this in as a two piece assembly. This goes in there. Now this one <laughs> this one goes in between back in here and I can't even see it so you can't see it and I've got two nut and bolt assemblies to come in from the side and then this one here is a tension bolt so I gotta tighten all three of these at the same time to keep it square against this pillar yeah, uh, not too much to see in this one. I'm just going to go ahead and do it because it's going to take me a while because I've got big hands and this is kind of going to be a pain in the butt. Stand by. And just a note, this would be cake with the wheel off because I could put my hand right where the wheel is. That's, that's exactly where I need to be to hold this nut on the other side. It's 11 mil nut. And it's just, I mean, I can touch it with my fingertip, but I can't get two in there to hold it. So I've got a curved wrench here. And I just, if I can get it started, it'll be okay. But holy crap, this is not fun. Holy moly, that took a lot longer than I thought. Got it on. It is snug. This side wasn't too bad. I could get my Allen wrench right in here. And I got this nice curved wrench that just went up against the tire here. So that went pretty quickly. One over here, man, the frame support's different and you can't turn this. So it was like one facet at a time, fingertip, oh. And then I got the center one snugged, nice and tight, flat, even, good to go. My light here is just about out of battery. Time to recharge it. And now I can put all this back and that'll wrap that up. Now I'll just have the two fender supports. I'll do these when I get the fender here because that needs to be all aligned. And then I'll snug these two bracket up so that'll complete that. Um, I guess I can work on, after I put this back, the seat and light brackets, which should go in here. We'll see. Now we've got two sets of brackets to install. I'm gonna turn down some more light for y'all. Got these seat brackets and on this side I'm also going to mount a bracket for the license plate frame because I went with the kit that installs it to the left. They also have an option and there's other ones out there too where you can put it on the fender kind of like stock but I like it on the side. Now here's a note they offer and again other people offer the option of doing your plate mounting horizontally or vertically make sure you check with your state laws or anywhere you're going to be riding I mean if you're riding out of state you might get hit too especially for reasons that it's legal only in Florida horizontally uh, because 
it varies state to state if that is specifically legal or not. Now, it was up until a few years ago, they didn't care here in Florida. But since we've gone to automated plate tolls where the cameras overhead read your license plate to assess your tolls instead of stopping at booths at a lot of places, vertical plates can't be read, so they're illegal. And they really cracked down on them here a few years ago when it you know, came into production. So make sure that you get the right kind of plate bracket if you're going to do this kind of thing and put your plate to the side. So I went with obviously a horizontal bracket. These here, got, I'm not sure off the top of my head which is left, which is right. Got to read the instructions. I know that the longer bolts go on the left because this is the license plate bracket and it goes over top of the bracket to kind of extend the frame down so this is where my plate will be here I would imagine it's probably going to be self-explanatory here once I actually hold them up got some washers and some bolts and I have to say a pet peeve of mine so far I'm, I'm very impressed with the quality of the blue collar bobber parts by the way but <laughs> they've hit one of my pet peeves mixing SAE and metric bolts for the same part install huge no-no guys it's really annoying to have to go grab another wrench set or another socket set just because this center bolt half inch these over here not SAE they're the instructions say they're Phillips screws, but they actually shipped nylac nuts, or uh, they're nylac nuts on the inside, metric, of course. They're 11 mil, and then outside are uh, Allen button head bolts. <laughs> so, and I think they were a six millimeter. So, all over the board here. I don't care which one you pick. I mean, it, it's going, when you're putting together a kit for a metric bike, you know off the bat that the person working on that bike may not have an SAE kit. I mean, let's just face it, unless you got a Harley, uh, you're probably working with metric exclusive. So, little suggestion there, if Blue Collar Bobbers ever sees this, change out that center for a metric nut or bolt. And I haven't even looked to see what these are. <laughs> I would half bet they're SAE also. I'll have to, I'll have to check. But we've got two different links here. The short ones go on the right. Each gets a washer. Should be simple enough. And let's hold these brackets up and see if we can tell which go to which. I don't think they're labeled. Well, that is probably it right there. That fits the profile. This is extending in. I can't imagine that would go out. So that looks good to me. Let's go ahead and mount this up. I'm going to put the lower in just to hold it in place. Well, I can't do that because i got to get this on first. All right, we'll just put the bolt through. have it hold itself together. There we go. Oh, I got that upside down. There we go. Much better. That through there. This through there. Get these hand tight and I'm going to leave these loose because everything has to mount to them to get the seat bracket and the pan and all that. They're already snugging up anyway. All right, there's one. I'm going to tighten them more than that though after I find out what size they are. Let's go do that right now. They are 17 millimeter. Go ahead and put this bracket on the other side here. And that'll wrap up another step.
one side. And two. All right, those are running all the way, but they're not torqued down. Let's do the seat next. Scratch that idea. It looks like the seat has to come after the gas tank. So, I'm actually going to wrap it up for today. So it might be a little on the short side. I don't know though. This took a lot. A lot of actual real time time. So that's it. Stay tuned for the next installment. I'm going to probably move on forward. We'll get the front wheel on, the brakes and maybe work our way up and do the bars. You know, I can get them loosened in without the tank. That's a good time to do it. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Check out the site, twowheelobsession.com. Here's the question of the day. What's your preference on a cruiser or any type of bike that lends itself to chrome? Do you prefer the chrome? Do you like the blacked out look? Do you like a combination? I know a lot of guys that love the blacked out look. You know, the matte black stuff, even gloss black stuff, and they hate chrome. And then I know a ton of people that love chrome freaking everything, especially on a Harley, where you can pretty much replace every single part on a Harley with a chrome piece or black. So what's your preference? That's it. See you next time.